Well guys, it's officially been three weeks that we've had the FD now and this summer has honestly been unbearably hot. So without the AC going, I don't think I can drive this car any longer. Today has been brutal just driving it. It's been like 90 degrees. If it's not 90 degrees, it's raining and humid. We're gonna try to get the AC fixed. We spent last night a few hours just looking up wiring diagrams and looking at the Helltech pinouts. So I think I have a pretty good idea of how we're gonna get the AC working. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I do wanna preface this video by saying that the AC compressor does work. I did test it the last time I tried to attempt to resolve this issue, but basically the compressor is right there and there is a wire that comes out from the back and goes up behind the power steering reservoir and when I put that to 12 volt source the clutch engages and the compressor spins so the system should technically work but it started to like seize up and uh, make a horrible squealing sound so we're gonna see what's up with that but we're gonna try to figure out the wiring issue first so for those of you guys who don't know how an AC system works when you hit the AC button on the dash. It sends a signal through the pressure switch and the thermo sensor switch. Sorry if I said that wrong, but I believe that's how it works. Then that signal goes through the ECU and tells the ECU that the AC is being requested. And then based on certain voltages set up on here or being sent out from here, then it sends a ground output to another wire also in that same yellow harness, which then activates the AC relay and turns on the compressor. So there are a couple ways to really do this and the easy way, but also a shortcut, is to completely bypass the ECU, which is kinda what we don't wanna do because the ECU does allow the car to raise the idle when the AC is being requested so that your engine doesn't stall because the AC compressor does put a heavy load onto the engine. And this is only a 1.3 liter engine. It's not a big old V8. It does need to bump the idle up to account for the AC compressor being turned on. And there's also some safety measures that you can allow the compressor to turn off if let's say you're doing a wide open throttle pull. So over let's say 70% throttle position or if you go over 4,500 RPM, it will actually turn the compressor off so that your engine can rev more freely and that you don't overspin and damage the compressor and your car will also make more power because it doesn't have the load of the AC compressor when the car is trying to make all that power. So that's why we wanna do it through the ECU, through the Haltech in here, do it the proper way. I've already taken all the uh, clips out, so this will come out very easily. Is a Haltech Elite 550 with a Haltech Premium wiring harness. The connectors that we're looking for that went to the original ECU are these yellow ones back here. Within these yellow connectors, there are going to be two wires, one input and one output for the AC switch and for the AC relay. Then we can begin to wire one of the inputs to the ECU. We do have one available uh, analog input available and we're gonna have to replace or reassign one of the digital outputs that currently for the boost controller right now, but we're running wastegate pressure and don't plan to use the boost controller for a while. And we can always switch to a manual boost controller. So we're gonna reassign that digital output. It's one of these wires to the harness. The pins that we're looking for are 1E and 1L. 1E is the input, 1L is the output. So we gotta go in here and uh, make sure that we're picking the right wire. So we just disconnected the Haltech ECU harness right there. So now we can look at the colors and the pinout. DPO4, PO4 right now is for the boost control solenoid. That's gonna be for AC, so we're gonna change that. Available resources, right? We have AVI A15, so that's a yellow wire. That will be our input. Right now it's not being used for anything. All right guys, we got a pretty nice update. The AC button to 1E, still we haven't figured it out, but we bypassed the 1L directly to ground, which is that bottom wire right there. 
and that turns the compressor on. So the AC right now is pretty dang cold. I gotta say it's probably blowing like high 60s, low 70s, it's cold. All right guys, exciting update. So we found out this wire right here that goes into the back of the AC control. This one, when the fan is off, goes to about 10 volts. When you turn the fan on to whatever four, first through I think four levels, it goes to around one to 1 1.5 volts. So now we put that into the input on the Haltech and in the Haltech itself, we have this going to the analog input so if it's above five volts i have it so that the ac compressor turns off and if it's below i think uh or if it's above 0.8 volts then the compressor turns on so this is like a 90 percent fix to the issue the ac button i couldn't figure it out so that it only sends that voltage when the ac button's on it's summer right now and I don't plan on using the heat for any reason. So for just the winter purposes, we have it so that whenever the fan is on, the AC will be also be on, which is fine for me because uh, when we turn it off, the AC compressor turns off, which is perfectly fine. We're not using heat in this car. I don't think we'll ever need to use heat in this car unless it's like the dead of winter and it's uh, you know no salt out on the road. and. When that time comes, it's a super easy fix. All you have to do is turn it off within the Haltech or just unplug one wire from the ECU and the AC compressor will never get grounded to turn on. So very happy. Let's get this all wired up and cleaned up and we'll see how it does. Well guys, the AC is working. Although the blower motor is not too strong in this car, it is coming out cold and I got the windows all rolled up. It feels pretty nice in here for a nice summer day. So if you guys enjoyed that video on how to fix AC in your RX-7, there's a lot of ways to do it, but this is the way that worked for me. If you have a Haltech ECU, this is definitely the way that you can wire it up. So if you guys liked the video, smash the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.